Yes, now, Democratic Senator Maisie Hirono of Hawaii. She's a uh, key member of both the Judiciary and Armed Services Committee. Senator, thanks very much for Good coming in. Do you believe that the president is actually pushing out Don McGahn out of the White House as part of an overall effort to end the entire Mueller probe? I know the president keeps trying to end the Mueller probe, but anything he does with regard to the Mueller probe can be deemed part of an obstruction effort on the president's part. So he should be very careful. On the other hand, we know that Dom again had talked to special counsel's people for 30 hours. I'm sure the White House is very concerned as to what Don uh, had to disclose. And now with his departure, as uh, your previous uh, person said, uh, he could very well be brought before the uh, 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 by Mueller's people to ask what else. You know, so anything that the president discusses with Don McGahn now can be all part of uh, whatever questions, uh, further questions the Mueller people have. Well, do you think those 30 hours of testimony that began gave Mueller's probe uh, will be key uh, to the, uh, the, the Mueller investigation? I think it will be one of the important aspects of the Mueller investigation, which first and foremost has got to continue without any interference from the White House or any other political interference. As you know, you heard what the president said today. He said he's not worried about McGahn's testimony before Mueller and his team. But sources have told CNN, uh, and we've, we've been reporting this for a while, that news of McGahn's cooperation with Mueller, in the words of these sources, unnerved the president. Uh, should he be concerned about what the White House counsel revealed already and what he might still reveal? I think he should be concerned, not just by uh, what Mueller, uh, by what McGahn knows, but, you know, I, I just wanted to comment on what the president said that with regard to McGahn, they just follow the book. And I say it must be the president's book, which involves a lot of lying on the part of the president and his people. You, you, so it's not just what McGahn knows, but uh, Steve Cohen, uh, Manafort. Michael uh, Cohen. Uh, yeah, Michael Cohen, yeah. yes. Uh, there is a Steve Cohen, but right. Michael Cohen. And uh, uh, Manafort, all of these people, uh, it's all the, of a piece. Do you, you think the, the, the president is going to pardon Paul Manafort, his, came, his campaign chairman, uh, who was convicted on eight counts mm -hmm. uh, just in recent days? I think that, that the fact that uh, the president has uh, continued to say very nice things about Manafort and the fact that Manafort, given the option, opportunity to consolidate these uh, two cases, uh, the next one is coming up soon, and he didn't take it, leads me to think that uh, he was hopeful that a pardon was uh, coming forward. But I think that a pardon would also be part of an obstruction uh, assessment of what, of the, what the president is uh, contemplating. In his tweet uh, this morning, the president said McGahn uh, would be leaving after the Brett Kavanaugh confirmation before your committee, the Senate Judiciary Committee, before he's confirmed as the next United States Supreme Court Justice. Uh, you're, you're on that Judiciary Committee. The hearings are supposed to begin for Kavanaugh, what, next Tuesday? Then they continue yes. Wednesday and Thursday. They're mm -hmm. going to go on for several days. Uh, how do you plan to address the Mueller probe in, ter in terms of your questioning of Kavanaugh? Because... If he does become a sitting member of the U.S. Supreme Court, some of these issues go up to the Supreme Court, yes. he could play a significant role. I think it's in the context of what uh, uh, Judge Kavanaugh has said about the extent of executive privilege, executive powers, and whether or not a sitting president can be subject to either criminal or civil proceedings. So, yes, so there, there is an aspect to it that, that is very concerning. I think this is one of the reasons that the president selected Judge Kavanaugh over all of the other Federalist uh, Society Heritage Foundation picked uh, potential nominees because Judge Kavanaugh is the only one who said, well, you know what, the president should not have to respond to criminal or, or uh, civil proceedings while he or she is sitting. So I think that has uh, definitely been brought to the, this president's attention. And so um, I uh, am not surprised that he picked Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, all of these these issues have got to be brought out in his hearing, uh, and I intend to to probe uh, him on his positions regarding uh, environmental protection laws. Uh, you know, there are definite patterns to uh, Judge Kavanaugh's dissents. I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions. You were going to sit down and have a meeting with him last week, but in the last minute, you decided to cancel that. Has it still been canceled? Have you met oh, yes, with him yet? Yes, it's canceled, and the the reason remains, and it was after. Michael Cohen uh, uh, guilty pleas and Manafort's conviction on eight counts that I said, 
Um, considering that uh, the president picked Judge Kavanaugh, in my view, because of Judge Kavanaugh's position uh, in terms of, uh, of the president's powers and um, the limitations to any civil or criminal proceedings, I thought, uh, you know, the, the president does not deserve my sitting with his nominee. But of course, I will be at the hearing and I will ask Judge Kavanaugh all kinds of questions relating to this and so many other areas. But if he is confirmed uh, by the U.S. Senate, even by a very narrow margin, if he is confirmed, he will be, in your, in your eyes, a legitimate U.S. Supreme Court justice. My being, uh, my, my saying that, that I would not meet with Kavanaugh has, has little to do with the so-called legitimacy. The president got to nominate, gets to nominate. He has not been impeached. He's still the president. So it, that was not the reason that I chose not to meet with uh, Judge Kavanaugh. But you know what? The judge will have every opportunity under oath to put his best foot forward as to why he should be confirmed as a uh, sitting Supreme Court justice and probably... Uh, the fifth vote and the many five to four decisions that will come, the, come down the pike that will impact uh, people's health care, um, voting rights, individual rights, uh, certainly a woman's right to choose will be on the line. We'll have extensive live coverage of those confirmation yes. hearings starting on Tuesday uh, here on CNN. I want to get your reaction uh, to the Republican gubernatorial candidate in Florida. Uh, what he said, this is Ron DeSantis. He's a congressman mm -hmm. uh, from Florida. He just won last night in that election. Uh, he's, being, he's, he's being challenged by the Democratic mayor uh, of Tallahassee, Andrew uh, Gillum, who is African-American. Mm -hmm. Listen to what uh, DeSantis said la uh, earlier today on Fox News. The last thing we need to do is to monkey this up by trying to embrace a socialist agenda with huge tax increases and bankrupting the state. That is not going to work. That's not going to be good for Florida. Now those words, monkey this oh, up, yes. uh, talking about an African-American challenger and the Democratic uh, gubernatorial candidate. Uh, some people say that's a racist dog whistle. What do you say? I say that it was a conscious choice of words. Um, and uh, it's not just a dog whistle, it's a bullhorn. So what, do you, what would you like a, a Congressman DeSantis to do? I think he should apologize for what he said, but I think when people speak that way, they're really speaking their own, uh, you know, where they are coming from. And to the extent that uh, this nominee is very close to Donald Trump, uh, I would say that uh, birds of a feather flock together. Senator Hirono, thanks so much for coming Thank in. Thank you. Aloha. Maisie Hirono of Hawaii.